Welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for watching our broadcast today. R&R, uh, &R, when you hear R&R, uh, &R, what do you think? Well, you think uh, vacation. <laughs> I'm going on a R and R. I'm going to just relax and take it easy. And unfortunately, so many people go on vacation <laughs> and they don't do an R&R. &R. Um, when they get back <coughs> back from the vacation, <coughs> excuse me, they need another one. Um, but in uh, another form, R and R, talking about religious or relationship, R and R. Uh, many people in the quote unquote Christian faith, you know, uh, are 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 um, in, born into a denomination. And uh, that's what they stay. They stay in that denomination, um, it, a, a religious order, uh, what it is. And that's not going to get you to heaven, and that's not going to get your sins forgiven. Uh, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and my sins, and uh, Jason Sturdivant's sins, uh, my guess, so that we might have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, uh, religious, people say, well, I'm religious, but w what does that mean? That you go to church every Sunday, that you do the formalities of the whatever denomination it is, uh, whether it's uh, Protestantism or Catholicism, it's a formal format. But the thing that God is looking for is people to have a relationship with him. See, that's what he died for, so that people can actually get to know their creator, because Jesus created everything. Uh, everything was created by him, and there was nothing that was uh, created that wasn't created by him. Everything is created by him. But he wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Once you do that, what happens is then you have to understand that what happens is, is that the grace of God is what saves you, not works. Uh, because a lot of religious organizations around the world, even outside of Christianity, it's do good, do good, and you get to heaven. But that's not the way it's with God, because we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. But it's a finished work at Calvary where Jesus died for our sins and we're saved by God's grace. Uh, we don't deserve it, but he gives it to us anyways. So I hope that if you are, you're religious, I hope that you understand that in order to get to heaven, you have to have that second R, have that relationship with Christ. You'll be born again, and things will start to change in your life. And no longer will you be thinking the old way but you'll be thinking in the spirit realm and knowing that God's going to take care of you. And when you die, you'll be eternally with him. Jason, thank you for coming on our broadcast today and sharing, uh, sharing uh, your story. Uh, there's many, many people that come on and they have uh, horrible stories. And there's many people that come on that they don't have horrible stories. Um, but uh, uh, both of the factors were that um, they didn't have Jesus in their life. Right. And, and some people have had Jesus in their life at a young age and straight away, but God brought them back. Amen. You know, Amen. so, so uh, how, how, how was your upbringing, uh, Jason? Well, th thank you for having me on your show, Reverend Cohen. Um, my upbringing um, was phenomenal. Um, I had the both of both worlds. I grew up in a home that was not in the church, but yet I had an aunt that was in the church mm. who brought us to the church, me and my sister to the church. Oh. Um, my family was not the religious family, but they were churchgoers, mm. but they weren't the church. And I thank God for one person in the family 
mm -hmm. um, being able to accept them, accept, excuse me, accept the Lord at an early age. Mm -hmm. And for there, from, from that point on, she brought us up into the church. And so therefore, I've been in church all my life. Mm -hmm. um, I have done some things while in the church, but yet mm -hmm. the church wasn't really in me at one point. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I thank God for the, the actual indwelling of his spirit inside of me now. Yeah. And the thing is, is that uh, I always find it amazing that um, church is not good for the parents, <laughs> um, but the parents will let their children go with uh, somebody who is in the family or a neighbor or anything like mm -hmm. that. And to me, um, it's just kind of, um, it's like, well, it's good for you, but it's not good for me. Uh, but the thing is, is that um, no one comes to the Father except through God, Jesus, Jesus. That's right. you know, and, and so when, when you were going to church as a young, young, young lad, um, did you get to a point where you enjoyed it? Because there's people that go to church, they have to go mm -hmm. instead of they want to go, you know, and a lot of times when you have to go, when they get older, they just kind of rebel. Uh, how was it with you? Well, I enjoy going to church. Um, my background, we uh, came out of Christ Temple right here in Greenberg, town mm -hmm. of Greenberg, City White Plains. Um, and at that time was the founder of the late Bishop S.M. Tucker. Um, he founded the church um, many, many years ago. Um, but when I was coming up, um, it was fun. I enjoyed going to church. Um, there were things to be done with the young people there, and they always engaged us in the services. So I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. I loved it. We always had a, um, we were known for our singing. You know, mm -hmm. we had the choirs, and the choirs sung for days and, and all over Westchester County and, and, and vicinity. Um, we sung just about any place, any place <laughs> they asked us to. Um, but that's what we were known for, um, but yet also known for um, just the teaching that we had. Mm -hmm. And so what they taught us was my foundation in Christ. So mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. you know, but I, did I always do the right things? No, I didn't always do the right things. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for the teaching I had because it stayed within me. So when I did stray, mm -hmm. I was able to come back because of my foundation. And, and when you said about your, your straying away, because uh, Satan tries to, well, two things. Uh, number one. His main focus is to keep people away from coming to Christ. Yes. Because when he does that, he knows that they will be spending eternity with him in the lake of fire. Correct. Uh, because their sins aren't forgiven. And he also hates uh, every human being that was ever born because uh, Jesus, the Savior of the world, was born a child. Right. And everybody who was born outside of Adam and Eve were born a child. Uh, they were born uh, adults. Right, right. And... Um, so, so, but once an individual does come to Christ, right, he, he, he wants to do the best he can to keep them away from walking that straight and narrow path. And um, with, with you, um, because we have a flesh, we're still flesh, yes. uh, was there any peer pressure in school or anything like that that caused you to kind of uh, deviate away from from walking kind of the way that you, you knew that you should have walked or at that time did you actually receive Christ in your life or was it just that you were going as just a religious uh, kind of order well I, I joined the church at at the age I believe I had to be about six or seven years old mm. I freely I looked at my aunt and I literally remember looking at her and said, I want to join the church. Um, so from that point on, um, I grew up, in, like I said, in the both worlds, you know, had the, the avenue of knowing what it's like to live out in the world and knowing what it's like to live in the church. But um, when I, as I was growing up, um, there wasn't a particular thing that strayed me away. Um, but, you know, there are things that's within us that yeah. I did not know that lies within you. And sometimes the closer you grow to Christ, uh -huh. um, you find out there are certain things that's in you. 
and that sometimes the enemy will use that to uh, play against you to lure you out a little bit. Yeah. And um, but I thank God that I had enough sense in me, although I may have lured just a little bit, but I didn't lose where I was in God. Yeah. Now, when you said you you you, you receive, when was it that you actually? Um, outside of making a commitment to the church, mm -hmm. because the church is uh, kind of just a building, you know, and a denomination in there. But w when was it actually that you um, said, Jesus, come into my life and, you know, I, I want to uh, have you as my Lord and my Savior? Was that a little later on? In your it was life? later on. I mm -hmm. was in my preteens around that time. Um, so right before I got into high school, mm -hmm. um, junior high area so i would say my preteen preteen years i remember standing i was not even in the church mm. i was standing in my bedroom uh. and i prayed and i remember um it was my late bishop um tucker will always teach you don't have to be in a church building to accept the lord jesus as your personal savior mm. you can be right there in your living room or wherever you are you can accept him right there mm. and so that stuck with us that stuck with me me and my sister talk about that all the time mm. and so no matter what happens in life you can accept christ right where you are even if you, them viewing us right now as we talking yeah. you can receive the lord jesus yeah. and guess what that's as just easy as that you know there's no um we have to, you know, have all these lists. You have to go through, check off this, check right, off yeah, that. Yeah. That's not, that's, that's not even scripture. Uh -huh. You know, the Bible says if we confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. And that's what I did. And I asked uh -huh. the Lord to come into my life. And he has been there ever since, every step of the way. Yeah. And, and, and when that happens, um, e even though you're in church mm -hmm. and you're, you're active and you're singing and you're, uh, I mean, w when Christ comes into your life, isn't it uh, true, Jason, that there's something within that that is a void? But when Jesus comes in, the Holy Spirit fills that void. Yes. And and did you you get a peace at that time when it happened? It's a peace. It's a peace. It's, a, it's something. It's an indescribable feeling. Yeah. Um, I, I I can't say it is a specific word that describes what took place. But all I know that there difference. was a change. There's a yeah. difference. There's something different about my countenance. There's yeah. something different about the way I walk and talk and all that stuff. I try to fit in, even though after I accepted Christ, I still try to fit in. <laughs> well, that's what happens. <laughs> and but, I couldn't. Yeah, because the, the thing is, is that um, it, it's a different walk. It and, is. and like you said, it, you can't really describe it. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless you have that experience. And when an individual comes to Christ, then they'll know what you're talking about in a personal way. Yes. Because they have it in there. Now, now, a, as a believer, right, um, the end, that does not mean that uh, life is going to be 100% free of trials and tribulations. Uh, matter of fact, no, now that... Now you, now that, see, see, even though you're in church and you're active, mm -hmm. but without receiving Christ in your life, you're still, and not just only you, I'm talking about right. anybody, right. Um, you actually don't have the Father. In other words, Satan is the one that is controlling your life. That's right. But once you come to Jesus, now you change allegiance yes. from yes having him as being master to Jesus being master. Yes, yes. And he doesn't like that. No, he don't. And so, I mean, and he brings stuff to people's lives. Like, you know, uh, maybe before you come to Christ, you weren't, people weren't sick or financially they were good. And now they come to Christ, they're sick a lot. Mm -hmm. Their finances aren't good. Yes. Uh, situations happen like that. Did, did things like that start to happen to you? Yes. Where, where it like was like like this coming against you because you had given your heart to Jesus? It, it happened. Things happened as I was growing up. Like you said, peer pressure, all that. Um, but it wasn't really until I started saying yes to the ministry 
that God has called me to. Oh, okay. So that's when all the true trials and true tribulation, as I call it, yeah. um, that really came against me. Um, accepted the Lord Jesus at an early age, accepted the call into ministry at the age of 18. I'm just getting out of high school at that point in time. And so therefore, boom, here comes the enemy. Oh, now you say the Lord called you to preach. Boom, now you, I'm going to put you to the test. Mm -hmm. And he def definitely did. So I went through things in the church and, out and outside the church. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that my foundation is what kept me mm -hmm. to keep going forward. So I thank God for my foundation. Yeah, and, and it's all about the foundation. Yes, it is. Because if, if you, even the scripture says it, if you build your house on uh, hay, wood, and stubble, yes, right. and the hurricane comes, you have no house. Have nothing. But if you build it on a solid rock, the foundation there, then when the hurricane comes, you're still going to stand. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, is that... Um, you know, the scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord. Lord will raise up a standard yes, against him. Yes. And, and, and so in your life um, as a born again child of the king, have you ever had situ situations happen to you where uh, there was like kind of no hope? And, 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 and then, then God worked like a, a miracle out where... It's all about giving God the glory and that God wants to get the glory and for our benefit. Because that's what the scripture says, as you know, and we know that all things work together well, for the good, for that. those who love God and call according to his purpose. purpose yes. So was there a, a couple of times there maybe that you, uh, it, was like, it was like hopeless and, and then all of a sudden, it, it, boom, God comes. And it comes to the, as I'd like to say, rescue. You know? there, there have been, oh God, countless times. <laughs> um, some things. Um, because you know why, uh, Jason, you might have in, in, in the audience, you might be some people who are, who are watching, you know, that, that they're going through that here. You, oh, yes. You know, and, and uh, a, a scripture for me that's really um, just important to continue to remember is, Romans fifteen thirteen, mm -hmm. may the God of hope yes, yes. fill you, fill you yes. with all joy and peace yes. in believing that you might abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Because it's the joy and the peace that comes in with that. You know, it is. Help us. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, there, like I said, there's countless things that I, I, I have encountered. Um, I just. I, I don't like to say I just went through, but, you know, the Lord brought me through something through last year um, that was so devastating to me in my life. Um, I thought there was no way out of it. Mm. Um, mm. You know, the persecution that I received, the, mm. the ridicule that I received um, just because of something of a misunderstanding, mm. um, you know, the, the, the backlash. Um, the people that want to scandalize your name, the people that want to talk about you mm -hmm. and don't really have the full story and they will take part of a story and they will twist that story. Oh, Satan's and, familiar with oh, that. Oh, yeah, yes, he oh, is. Well, I mean, yes, he, 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 took the, he took scriptures with, uh, to, uh, coming against Jesus with scriptures and twisting the scriptures. Yes, he did. Right. And that's what he did in my life about a year ago. And Jesus beat him by bringing the scriptures the right way yes and so that's what he, he tells the half truth yes he does and he twists things yes right and that's what happened to you yes it is and but it's funny how people believe the half truth instead of the, instead of the whole truth yeah and but i thank god that i had people in my corner that knew the truth and that was able to uh, minister to me as i was going through that's how i made it through because of the ministry, because trust me, I wanted to give it all up. Yeah. But I thank God that I was able to still stand my ground. Mm -hmm. I thank God that he brought me through. And uh, one day the Lord's going to let me write, write a book about it and tell it all mm -hmm. of what, went, all what I have just encountered. Because I've never been in, in something like this in my life before. And I don't ever wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I just tell people to be careful how you throw stones at people. Be careful because, you know, the, what, the seeds that you sown, you're going to reap it. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes that reaping of that seed that you sown is not going to be a good, a good reaping. Mm -hmm. You know, you got, if you reap bad, you know, you sown bad seeds, you're going to reap the bad seeds that you just sown. But we got to be very careful 
how we persecute people. But they persecuted our Lord and Savior. They hung him on the cross. And look what happened. Now he sits on the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. I thank God because he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. And I want to be that person, one of the people, part of the church, that when he comes back without a, for a church, without a spot or no wrinkle. And they did that uh, also, Jason, to uh, the prophets. Uh, the prophets. Yes, they did. That, uh, um, uh, they beat they them. They did that. They beat them. They killed off. them. Yes. Uh, they're doing it today. Yes, they are. In countries around the world. So far in America, we've escaped that. So far. Uh, so far. And the way we're headed, I don't know how long we're going to escape it because we have an, uh, 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 mm. a a um, country that has become, uh, let's do what's right in our own eyes right. instead of the right. Lord's so, eyes. So and, 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 and so... See, see, the the Lord had a ram in the thicket for for Abraham when he's just about ready to sacrifice his son. The, the Lord said, uh, "Abraham, Abraham, you know, yes, he did. don't do that. You know, oh, we know now that you fear God." Yes, yes. And and he he looked behind him, and there was, was the ram in the thicket. Yes. It wasn't in front of him because if he saw it in front of him, you know, that's not he faith, stopped. right? But, you know, faith was, you know, what you don't see. You walk by faith and not no, by sight. And he looked yes. by there and he saw the ram in the thicket. So God had a, a couple of rams in the thicket for you where you felt you were hopeless. Yeah. Because, you, you, you know, um, it, it, it's difficult to be able to, um, especially situations like that, you know, Jason. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says two are better than one. Yes, it is. When one falls, the other one will pick him up, and a three-chord strand's not easily broken. Right. What, what was the What was the time frame of it that that um, took before it was had that that breakthrough for you? Um, it was a year. A whole year. A whole year. Uh -huh. I, I'm doing ministry. Started just open up my church, and boom, everything broke loose. Uh -huh. And what I did, and I looked to my, my, my bishop, and I said, I'm sitting myself down. I shut it all down. I was just going to sit down for 30 days, and it turned out to be a whole year. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now waiting on the Lord to restore everything back to its original use, mm -hmm. to where God really, where I just dropped everything because I needed God to work on me. I needed God to work with me yeah. and to restore me, <clears throat> excuse me, to restore me back to where he needed me to be. And so right now, um, after the restoring has taken place, now I'm ready to do the work and ready to go out and to minister to whoever I need to minister to. And, and, and the thing is that's contrary to the natural man mm -hmm. is forgiveness. Yes, it is. I mean, the natural man, there's no way to forgive. Huh. In the natural. Yes. <clears throat> But, but Jesus said, if you can't forgive others, then how can I forgive you? So basically, it has to be a working on the inside through the Holy Spirit. Yes, it does. And that's the fight. Yes. The, the battle that goes on is the flesh against the spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit man is, I have to forgive. Yes. And the flesh says, why should you? Yes. And so that's the kind of battle that goes on with everybody in situations and circumstances but it, it, when you come to a point where you know it's done then you know that once it, it's done and you do get that settled within you and mm -hmm. with God then that's a point where you can move on yes right yes right and, and, and uh, people we're, we're praying for you uh, a lot, I guess, right? Praying, counseling, because um, I'm crying, you know, I'm crying my eyes out. Lord, yeah, why, sure. why is this? Yeah. Why is this happening? Um, yeah. And of course, the Lord didn't say why it happened, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but it, it, everything works out for our good. Yeah. You know, at the end, we will see the glory in the, the whole situation that we just went through. But as you said, I was counseled. I, I was. They were talking to me. 
Um, I had people to let me know that we're here. We got you. Keep coming. Don't don't give up. Don't give up on God. Yeah. Don't throw in. You, your ministry is not over. This is just a test you're going through. And I thank God for those that stood in my corner. I thank God for because everybody don't know the situation. You know, that's why I haven't really said the pinpoint of what it was or what it ha what took place. But all they uh, all I will say is. I was persecuted. For no reason at all. Unjustly. Unjustly. Yeah. Uh, lied on, uh, talked about, mistreated, all that good stuff that they, people will talk about yeah. and say, I, w I went through that for a whole year. Mm -hmm. for good, it was really, um, I would say the, the whole period of things took over a period of time was about maybe two and a half months. But it was like the worst two and a half months of my life. But it took a whole year yeah. for God to restore me back. There's a man in the Bible named Job. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you probably could relate very much to him. Lost everything. Lost everything. Lost everything. And he was physically not well in his body. And because things did not go the way people thought it could right. go, they thought that you're doing something wrong, Job. You're sinning. Yeah. And so they, they looked and admired Job. And it didn't change. Mm -hmm. Then they kept on coming against him mm -hmm. and bad mouthing him yes, and did. laughing at him. And what did he do wrong? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And misunderstanding yes. is that uh, things happen to you doesn't mean that you deserve it right. because you're not doing right, right. You're not doing the right thing. Correct. And that's what happened to Job. And he was two years. Mm -hmm. The scholars say with that. Yeah. And then uh, Job had to forgive his three friends that were the ones that were bad in God's sight. Yes. And God says, Job, you didn't do anything wrong. You know, and then God restored him. Yes. He gave him double of everything he lost and his 10 children. He got 10 more children like that. Oh, yes. He so, did. They, wanted, they wanted him to curse God. His mother, his, his wife, sorry, his wife, his wife mother, wanted yeah. him to curse God. Wife, yeah. um, but see, in the midst of it, me going through, I didn't curse God. I, did, I, I asked God why, but I still went through. I still endure the shame. I still endure the embarrassment. I still mm -hmm. endure the heartache. I still endure what I had to go through in order to see the victory at the at end the of end. it. And the thing, Jason, is is that uh, I believe mm -hmm. as God restored Job, yes. you're going to be restored too. Oh, yes. Th thank you so much, Jason, for coming thank on you. the show thank you for and, having and sharing me. Uh, that life is not a, a bed of roses, uh, even as a believer. Oh, you know? <laughs> but, no. but, but, but But you stood s steadfast. Yes. You were unmovable, always, always. abounding. And the faith yes. of the Lord. Yes, with yes. The, thank you so much. Well, ladies thank and you. gentlemen, don't know what you're going through, uh, but whatever it is, you know, Jesus is the answer. Uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he's the only truth there is. There's no other truth except Christ. And, you know, uh, turn to Christ if you're religious and don't have relationship. Because Jason was religious at one time, but then be had a relationship and he became complete. In him, uh, he's the answer to. Uh, he's the only way to have heaven, your home, forever, eternity, forever. Trust God, and you'll never, never regret it. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. Where the sun. Mm -hmm.